Is After Effects' newest 3D workflow the first step towards a future where 3D modeling is so intuitive that it blurs the line between creativity and accessibility, redefining who gets to create? Honestly, maybe. Let me tell you why. So new in After Effects 2025, say goodbye to the hassle of 3D workflows. Now you can import GLB, GLTF, and OBJ files with built-in animations and use powerful tools like realistic shadows, depth effects, and the advanced 3D renderer to create stunning scenes faster than ever. Previous versions of After Effects made 3D integration difficult with clunky workflows and a steep learning curve. Animators and editors struggled with complex processes, slow real-time previews, and poor 2D and 3D asset integration, often relying on external 3D software to get the job done efficiently. But in 2025, pro-level 3D is about to get a whole lot easier. So like I mentioned, you'll need the latest version of After Effects for this to work. So if you haven't already, update your AE. I'm currently running version 25.1 for those of you who care. To get started, we're gonna create a new composition with our footage. Today, I have this drone footage of somewhere in the desert that I think looks pretty cool. Something you do wanna keep in mind when choosing your footage, however, is that footage with motion and depth featuring distinct foreground, midground, and background elements usually works best. Having enough tracking points helps achieve a solid track while scenes with minimal movement or low contrast can result in a weak track. Basically, for the best results, use relatively steady footage with sufficient movement, depth, contrast, and texture. So once you've settled on your footage, it's time to find a 3D model to integrate into the scene. If you're working on a commercial project where you'll need proper licensing, I'd suggest using a stock site like Adobe Stock to source your 3D models. However, in this instance, I'll just head to sketchfab.com as they have a great selection of high quality, free 3D models. So for today, I think I'm gonna search for a DeLorean because I just rewatched the Back to the Future trilogy recently, and it got me thinking about how easy it would be to recreate some of these shots with the new 3D workflow in After Effects in 2025. Currently, After Effects supports the use of GLB, GLTF, and OBJ files, so as long as you download one of those file types, you should be fine with this workflow. For reference, I typically download the GLB model. Now back in After Effects, let's import our footage into a new composition, and up under our composition settings, there's one setting that we need to change. So under this 3D renderer tab, we're gonna need to change our renderer here from classic 3D to advanced 3D in order for this to work. Now, what's really exciting is how easy everything gets from here. We can drag our 3D model onto our timeline, select make comp size to ensure it fits our frame, and immediately we have our 3D model with its texture and colors intact that we can now use the orbit tool with to rotate the DeLorean in 3D space. If you've used any previous versions of After Effects, you'll notice this step of the process is so much smoother than before, which makes it a lot less frustrating of a workflow. What we're gonna do next is 3D camera track our footage so we can track our model into the scene. To do that, first just disable the 3D layer for now and search for the 3D camera tracker effect in the effects panel. Apply that to the footage layer in the composition and typically we can leave the default settings for most footage. But in short, the idea is you want the average error value here to be as low as possible. The lower the value, the cleaner the tracking's going to be, essentially. You can adjust shot type, solve method, and detailed analysis if you feel like you do need to lower the average error value, but like I said, the default settings should be fine. Once the camera tracker is done, you should see a bunch of these tracking points across your footage that we can increase the size of over here if we want them to be a little more visible. If we scrub through our composition, you can see the tracking points are sort of stuck to their individual sections of the footage, which is exactly what we want. Now we wanna find the area where we want our model to track into our footage, so you can click and select an area of tracking points like this, which will give you this highlighted section with a target in the middle. Just right click the target and choose create solid and camera. Now if we drag our 3D model to the top of our layers and enable it, you can see it's tracking into our scene, but it's not in the middle of the road where we just selected. So what we're gonna do is hold shift and click and drag this pick whip tool from our 3D model and drag it over to our recently created tracked solid. Instantly, you'll notice the car is now tracked right where we made our selection, which is perfect. And we can seamlessly scrub through to preview it without any lagging like we'd experience in previous versions of AE. Now just set the parent and link setting of your 3D model back to none. And if we need, we can adjust the scale and position controls to fine tune our model. For example, I'm noticing the car is sitting with our track solid, sort of halfway up it, 
so I might raise its position slightly like this so the tires are flush against the ground. A cool effect you can experiment with here is increasing the scale to create this larger than life 3D model effect like you saw in the intro. When you're happy, disable the track solid underneath the car. Now we're gonna add some 3D lighting to match the lighting in the scene. So what we can do is head to a website like Polyhaven to source what are called HDRIs. HDRIs or high dynamic range images are special images that capture a wider range of light and color making them ideal for realistic 3D lighting and reflections. They're used as environment maps to provide both background and lighting in a 3D scene, simulating real world lighting conditions. In a perfect world, we'd have an HDRI specific to this desert where the original footage was shot, but because we're balling on a budget, we're gonna search for a similar desert HDRI on Polyhaven and download it as it should work fine for this example. Now, I think this one works great as it has similar colors in the sand and I can bring it into Photoshop and color match it more to our footage if I really need. Now, back in After Effects, drag your HDR file into the comp and disable it. Then right click to create a new light and set it to environment and make sure cast shadows is selected. Under your light source settings, select the HDR file we just imported and almost instantly, you'll see the lighting and reflections on our 3D model update to reflect a more realistic look based on our environment. We can now adjust the position or origin of our light to match where the sun would be shining from in our actual raw footage. So based on where the natural shadows are in our footage here, we can tell the sun is shining from this general direction. To adjust the lighting, we can adjust the X and Y rotation settings of our light. As we adjust these settings, you can see the lighting on the car is changing, but it's still hard to see exactly where our artificial light source is coming from. This brings me to possibly the greatest new feature that After Effects has implemented to their 3D workflow which is the ability to generate realistic shadows. So if we enable our track solid from earlier and scale it up a significant amount, we can see exactly where our shadow is sitting. This makes it much easier to adjust the shadows to exactly where you need them to be, giving you a much more accurate lighting setup. Now, if you're like me and you're not seeing your shadow on your track solid, just come to this renderer options menu and hit fit to scene, then okay, and it should pop up. Now that our shadow is visible on our solid, we can use the X and Y light rotation settings to fine tune where our shadow is actually sitting now that we can see it. Once the shadow is in the right position, open up your track solid settings and under material options, we can now set accept shadows to only, which was never an option before. And now we have just a realistic shadow where our track solid was. Back under the light settings, you can adjust the shadow darkness if it looks too dark or light and alternatively adjust the overall lighting intensity of the environment light to give us a final effect that looks like this. The new 3D features, improved camera tracker, real-time rendering, and better asset integration make creating complex scenes faster and easier, reducing reliance on external tools and streamlining your workflow so you can focus more on creativity and less on technical details. So let me know in the comments what you think of the new 3D workflow. Do you love it or do you hate it? And if you want to level up your editing game even more, consider subscribing. Peace.